welcome to our chicken run. We've recently changed our system from a more standard fixed coop setup to this mobile system. So I'm going to show you all the features of how we're doing this and how this is going to help us convert a standard orchard into a permaculture food forest. So first up, this is the original chicken coop that we built when we first moved to our property two years ago. It has a fully enclosed run and the chickens would be allowed to free range into the backyard daily. Currently, we still do use it for our ducks. Also, we do like having this option because it's always going to be there for if we ever go away on holidays or something like that. So the system that we have now is to use an electric fence. It's 50 meters perimeter solar powered and we have a mobile chicken coop. The chicken coop is based off the design called Chicksaw by Justin Rhodes. He has free plans on his website for this design and also a YouTube channel. So I'll put links to both of those things below in the description box. We really, really like this design. We did make some modifications, so I will do a future video just focused on this chicken coop and why we changed what we did. Now, there's a lot of people that would use a similar setup to this, even on a commercial scale, because they want to give their chickens access to fresh grass, and this supplements their feed costs. In part, I guess we're doing this, but primarily the main focus for us in changing to this system was to use the chickens in a way that replaces something like a rototiller. We actually want the chickens to eat all of the grass so that it's down to bare soil. And this means we're gonna to have to leave them in this area for a lot longer. They've been there for only a few weeks so far and already they have made an enormous difference. You can tell how much longer the grass is outside of where the electric fence is compared to what it's like on the inside. We want to expose the soil so that we can replace the grass with a food forest. We're retrofitting this traditional style orchard that we inherited with the property. We're super lucky that we got to have these mature fruit and nut trees, but it is a lot of maintenance to leave it the way it is and it doesn't fit with our overall permaculture design philosophy. If we were just to look after these trees as they are, not only would we need to irrigate them regularly, we would need to provide some sort of fertilizer or compost and probably mulches to these trees to get a good crop. And also we have to continually mow the grass because it is a grass fire risk. Grass, unlike a lot of other plants, dries out over summer and we actually legally have to take care of that. In contrast, a food forest system is based on forest systems found in nature. There's a lot more different levels to a food forest system from ground covers to mid-storey levels, climbing plants and then upper storey plants. And each of these plant systems benefits each other in a symbiotic relationship. This means that not only can a food forest system be a lot more productive, but actually it can be a lot lower maintenance once it's established. Now we're going to be very strategic about the plants that we introduce into our food forest system. We want everything to benefit the overall system either by providing us with something that we require like food or other kinds of products or by working as a ecosystem and having a symbiotic relationship with other plants. Now an example of that starts at the beginning in our succession planting with our ground cover. As soon as the chickens have exposed the soil, we will be spreading seed to replace the grass that was there. We've gone with a particular product from Green Harvest, no affiliation with them. What's wonderful about it is they have different blends for different climate types. I went with the temperate because that's my climate. And also they include the inoculant with the mix, which is so important actually when you're talking about a green manure style ground cover. When you're not just putting down seeds and hoping that it covers the soil, but you're also hoping that it will fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and provide a fertilizer and food for the other plants in the forest system. If you don't happen just by luck to have the right bacteria in your soil, then that aspect of it is not even going to happen. So it comes with the inoculant. I can be then sure that it's going to not only cover the soil and prevent the grass from regrowing, but also that it will then in turn add a lot of nutrients into the soil that then will feed the rest of my plants. Now the next stages I will definitely do future videos on when we actually get to doing them but 
We will then probably remove some of the ground cover to make way for other plants and also some pathways because it is going to become a lot more of a bushy sort of system. Now another plant that I should mention though that we will definitely be introducing to the system that I've already planted the seeds in small pots in this greenhouse here is tree lucerne and this also came with an inoculant because it is also a nitrogen fixing legume based plant. But in contrast to the ground cover, this is actually a tree, or at least a very large shrub. And I've chosen this plant because it has so many beneficial properties. Not only will it provide fertilizer and food for the other plants that are gonna be in the ecosystem, but it also has other great qualities. The leaves are great fodder for chickens, but also the leaves can be dried out and used as a source of carbon for mulches and for compost. Overall, it's just a very, very useful plant. So they're just some two really key kind of types of plants that I'm gonna be introducing in. Along with the obvious, I will definitely be putting more food plants. I'll be putting perennial vegetables. I'll be putting annual vegetables that will self seed. I'll definitely be focusing on things that will look after themselves. In terms of irrigation, we will be putting one or two swales through this system. I will definitely keep you updated as we move forward with this particular process. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the description box below. I'll see you next time. Bye now.